Good morning and welcome back to Mighty Little Green Machine. It's a beautiful fall morning. It's nice and crisp. And today I'm super excited about this video. I'm going to be installing probably, well, one of my, if not my favorite add-on to my 2025R. And that's the Auto Throttle Kit. I had it on my 1025R and I didn't even realize how much I loved it until I bought the 2025 and I haven't had it. Um, so if you don't know, the auto throttle kit, when you depress the pedal, either to go forward or to go reverse, as you push it down, it automatically increases the RPMs on the tractor so you gain your speed and power um, without having to raise the throttle. It's great for loader work, things like that. So you don't have to have the tractor up on high RPM. So, and you can just go to town with it. So let's get started. Okay, so I ordered this from green, uh, greenpartsstore.com. It's, it's actually a John Deere product. When you order it, this kit will work for both the 2025R and, it'll, uh, the 20, and it'll also work for the 1025R and I believe the 1023E. Uh, when you order it, put in the comment section which track do you have because the directions are different to make it work on a, a 1025. Now, I said I already, I already said that I had this on my 1025. Um, there's a few modifications you have to make to the kit to um, install it on the 1025, and the directions cover that. So it makes it nice and easy. So just let them know. I can tell you that I didn't put that in when I ordered this and they called me to make sure which tractor I had before they sent it to get me the directions. So this is the entire kit. You get this bag of parts. This is the, uh, this is the protective cover that ends up going over the pedal units underneath the bracket to put everything together. And then you get two cables. One cable gets one cable replaces your existing cable that goes from your hand throttle to the motor. And then one cable gets added that goes from the pedals to the motor. And there's a bracket that we're going to change on the side of the motor so that both cables work on there. So it, it makes it so both cables still operate and you can use them independent of each other. So you don't lose any of your functionality. In fact, you add functionality. So I'm going to start by opening up everything and making sure I have all the pieces. You are going to have to do some minor disassembly on your tractor. Nothing huge. Um, you take off the right floorboard. You need to take off the cowling that goes around the instrument cluster or the, the panel there. And you need to remove the right side side panel. I'm going to actually take the loader off too just to make sure. Um, or just to make it easier. You, you could actually probably do it with the loader on but it's a pain in the neck. And a pile of bolts. This is actually the bracket that's going to get bolted under the tractor. And that's going to put the assembly in it. And we're going to pre-assemble this before we even get started on the tractor. So that's why it's thought I'd start here.
is where you're going to actually build the assembly. Um, this is the actual bracket that's going to go in the tractor that's going to hold all these pieces. And I've got a bushing, and then I don't know what these are called, but there's very clear pictures in the directions on how to lay these out. So I am going to take this one. Shoulder bolt is the only one in the kit. Now, there's some studs in this. Make sure they're sitting in the right place before you put this together. Like I said, the pictures are very good on this. I had to kind of wiggle this to make sure everything was lined up perfectly before I put the nut on. So you've got this stud here and you've got this stud here. There's two holes or two grooves for them to sit into. Let me bring it over so you can see a little better. better. So if you see, I've got that rests down into there, that rests into there. Okay, and this is basically going to make it so that the pedals work and also the, the other throttle. here that's got the new clip on it. It's going to go here and we're going to slide the pin in and then put the washer on. So you can see the pin one here the washer went right there, and then that pin went in. Okay? And that's how the whole assembly looks when that part of it's together. Okay, so next thing I get onto the tractor, um, I gotta take it apart. I still haven't done that. I will show you how I take it apart. Okay, so you may be able to pull this off. As you can see, this is loose, but this is kind of hook holding it. So I'm going to pull that off because I have another video that I'm going to make showing you a fix for a problem that's common on these. So to take off the lower con lowering control knob and the mower knob, you need a 3 millimeter Allen key. And then there's another, th there's a number number three Phillips over there, and then these two bolts there which are probably 15s like those. 
Okay, so in there, there's a number three Phillips that's hooked to it. And then right here, you have this body clip on the side that I'm using a, a clip puller for. And it's gonna give me trouble with one hand, but that then the floorboard will come off. Okay, so that's what it looks like when you get it off. These bolts up here were 13s, these were 14s. This was a three millimeter Allen to get this off. It turns out for the mower deck one, there is no Allen in there, it just pulls up straight. And then that plastic clip on the side there, and it comes out. Now next, I don't know if I can get you in there. I have to remove that bolt and this one underneath here and the clips. So that's the next step. And then we're ready to start going back the other way. Okay, so the larger nut under here is a 5 8 and the smaller one is a half. Does not say anything about using Loctite. And I can tell you that I didn't use Loctite on my 10 and nothing ever loosened up. And I put 100 hours on that kit. gonna double check the other one while I'm here okay so now we'll get up and see what the next step is okay so now we're gonna install the adjustable bracket or the bracket for the adjustment on the reverse pedal we're gonna need two nuts I mean these are not shoulder nuts so just regular nuts and we're gonna thread one on And this is gonna be the new stop for the reverse pedal. And then this is gonna go up. So in order to get this on, I found I had it with the reverse pedal, which it's funny how easy these feel with your feet, but boy, when you're doing it with your hands. Now I don't know, I wanna double check. which way to put this this piece on because I feel like maybe it should go the other way but I'm not sure that's correct not going to tighten that yet if you can see this but this is what I did in the last step that's the stopper for the reverse pedal you use two nuts you set this one so it's about even with the nut that you put on the stud to hold this thing on then you slide this on and put another nut on and then you tighten it so that's done now so now let's see if I can get this position so you can see what I'm doing Okay, so next we need to install the linkages to the pedals from the auto throttle. But we need to set these first to 174 centimeters from the center of this pin to the center of this hole. And the reason that we need to do that is that's what's gonna set the maximum throttle. Now we're gonna test this and we can always adjust it if we don't get it exact. But what we're looking for, or what we're gonna be looking for is when you press the forward or reverse pedal all the way down that your throttle goes up to 3,400 RPMs is your maximum so I happen to have a ruler that has centimeters and millimeters
close. It's pretty darn close. Right now, it's much easier because you got to unattach it and do it after. Good morning. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this to go around it again. I don't know what's going on with these threads. I really don't want to have to tap them. Okay, so before I get under there, these are going to go this way. This is going to be the one towards the other side of the tractor. This is going to be the one towards this side. And there are bushings that go on each shaft and washers that go on there to attach them. So it turns out that I put this piece and this piece on the wrong sides. Um... So I gotta switch them. So when I showed you earlier how I set this up, reverse it. I'll try and remember to make a note in the video when I'm doing it so you guys know. Okay, well I guess let me get that done. Okay, so this is how it's supposed to be corrected now. Now, when I do the video, I'll put a picture of this in the beginning. So you'll be seeing the picture of this. <laughs> So you know. So now let's go back to the next step again. Do this so that it's right. Pushing washer. I had to get new cotter pins because they got mangled taking them out. This is why I keep all these different kits around so I don't have to run to the store. on the inside. Okay. 
always amazes me how far nuts and bolts and stuff can You want this to make in contact, which it is. Okay. So that part of it's done. Now we're going to go back up top. And we've routed the cable from the pedals back across the top of this pedal so it sits under the board. And then we've installed one of the clamps that came with the kit and one of the nuts that came with the kit. And that's actually bolted to the to the actual bracket from the kit for the thing. And we've started running the cable forward. Okay, so you can see it down here. So it comes out from the pedal. It loops across the top of this bracket, which is part of the tractor. It supports the fender. Comes around. Then we added into the existing hole. That doesn't need a nut. It's got a nut cert bracket for the cable we brought it through down underneath this shaft it's not even it's not touching it looks like it is but it's not even close and then it goes to this bracket which attaches to with a nut and bolt from the kit goes to that and it comes under that and none of this is even close to even touching then it comes over to here you add this bracket to this existing piece that holds the col the center console on and put another clamp there and now this, we have this rooted up towards the tractor. So I'm just gonna tighten these and we'll go to the next step. Okay, so next we're gonna remove the factory brackets. We're gonna remove the throttle nut and spring. And we're gonna remove this bracket. You're gonna keep the spring and the nut because we're gonna reuse those. Okay, so next we're gonna remove the hand throttle cable. Cause like I said, that's gonna get replaced as well. It's kind of tight in there, so I don't know. There's a 11 millimeter nut right there that you loosen, and then it'll come out of the bracket, and then we'll unhook it and pull it up through and get rid of it. Okay, if you look, there's a bracket that holds this cable right there, and there's a nut on the back side. It looks like it's uh, 12 that you got to take off, and then we can get that bracket off. Now. We're gonna install the new throttle bracket. It looks like this, because now obviously we're gonna have two cables. We're gonna use the existing screws and put them back, put it right back where the original one was on the tractor that was a single. Okay, there's one. 
on. Two. And then we're going to tighten those up. Those should be tens. <sighs> okay, so now that bracket's on. the new throttle bracket that bolts onto right where that screw and nut was earlier. I'm just gonna make sure I get this on right. Okay, so you can see the springs up underneath here. And then the nut is, the spring goes inside the nut. So the bracket goes on first like this. And this flat part is the throttle stop, so it's on this side of the screw, okay? Then the spring comes around and snaps into here so that you, when you do this, it returns. And see, there's your th return, your throttle screw. That sets how far where your idle is at. So now I just gotta tighten this, and then we can go ahead and run the cables. So, it's on there tight, stops it wide open, stops it idle, okay? So that works out good. Now, the next step is to we run our cables, okay? Get this cable in. Like that. Then, I don't know if I can show you this or not. We're gonna try. Yeah, it's hard to see. Then, we're gonna snap. Actually, before I do that, let me run you down into there. Again, we're trying not to kink these the best we can. Okay, that's better again. Now let's see if we can get you back in where you belong. Right, and then pop you back up in there, like that. Okay, no, why are you not locking? Okay, sure, sure this is all good. Okay, so that's working now. So now this one. this way. Okay. They've added a new feature to this. I don't know if you can see this, but I will show you after. 
So they added a bolt into the throttle bracket. So once you get the cables up in there, the bolt holds it on. I other one didn't either didn't have it or I didn't see that in the directions before. Um, so it sometimes would come off. So then those we're gonna slide in theory on paper. If I didn't have giant hands. Okay. We're getting on it. We are going to have to do some adjustment in here once we, uh, once we get all this hooked up to get the throttle adjusted correctly. So, there's the new cable. Run back like the factory one. Grommets back in, that comes down. I put the cable right here, holder back on. So this is a bolt that runs through the fuel filter. Then there's a spacer behind it and then a nut. So that put that back on. And here's how this goes together. So your inside cable is the one that's your hand throttle. Your outside cable is your auto throttle. I've tightened those up. These are put in down here. And then this bolt now keeps these from being able to fall out. So everything's hooked up now. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start it and see if we've got it adjusted right. As soon as I Okay, so we're gonna be checking a couple of things. First is gonna be our idle throttle. It should be around 1600. <laughs> This is why we do this and try it. So let me get down under there and I'll show you what I'm going to do. Perfect. Let's see if I can fit this out for this side. Oh, I gotta tighten that one up. Nice. Glad I got under here. That would have stunk. That's the forward one. I don't even need to take that one off. I forgot to tighten both of them. So I'm kind of glad it was off because what would have happened is those would have rattled out on me. And the worst part is finding those little bushings. The bolts and the, or the, you know, the bolt and the nut isn't too bad, but. Okay. So we're going to go bigger because we need more throttle or longer. I think I'm going to start with two turns, see how that gets us. Yeah, we're going to do two. So like I said, I'm just making this longer. Now, if it was going too high, I'd make it shorter. Make sure the washer's still in there. I'll just put this together temporarily and then we'll try it again.
Okay, I'm just gonna put it on snug. So we're gonna try this again. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start it again. I'm gonna push the reverse all the way down and we'll see where it goes. <laughs> turns Let's see how that goes good news is it gets easier because this one was the one that I had to fight with of course That I think is too far now. Because now, yeah, maybe not. I don't think I can go much more than that. So hopefully this does it. Now let's try it again. try it because it's not quite going reverse isn't as critical because i tend to never go as fast in reverse but i'll see if i can get it while i'm here yeah see the problem now is it's too long so we're gonna leave it like that um, my other one the reverse never went as high either but like i said i never go as fast in reverse as i do in forward so usually and I can always turn it up with the hand throttle you know what I think I might have done these bushings wrong Hold on a minute. I think that the bushing needs to go in the actual linkage. Looking at this. Let's see if that makes more sense. Oh, well, that was silly of me, so yeah. Okay. So, I guess we'll switch them both. But, again, it happens. Hopefully, the things that I'm showing you make it so you don't have to make these mistakes. Of course, my nut went rolling away somewhere. I don't know where. Hmm. Well, find it in a second. Let me get this one fixed too. Again, it's a four millimeter Allen or hex head. And a 10 millimeter wrench. Okay. 
Oh yeah, that makes more sense now. Okay, good. Let's see how we did. We're gonna give it one more test. And I'm gonna check. One more thing. working perfect and actually by switching the bushings around the reverse now goes almost all the way up it's pretty close so now the last step is to put the protective box on it uh, this is supposed to be the hardest part of this getting this brace on Almost there. Oh, you know what? What if I do this? Nope, that makes it worse. You gotta kind of finagle this around this bracket. And it just doesn't want to go here. No, that makes it worse. bring it up this way. Okay, so it looks like by pushing the lever in the other direction or pulling the reverse, I might be able to have a better luck at getting this on. on everything no matter what I do with it. Huh. There it goes. You just gotta find the right angle of the dangle. Oh, it's kind of there. It's almost there. Okay, now let's see what happens when I bring you up. This is not fun. I'm gonna tell you that right now. So close. So, so, so close. There it goes. Wow, that was not fun. nice thing is they, this bolts in three places right onto the bracket that you uh, added for this and they've got the nuts welded right on there see okay and there it is all done with the protective box on it the only thing I have left is to put the tractor pieces back on but there's another project I'm going to do while I have it apart you'll see that in another video hopefully this helped you Took me a few hours. Leave yourself some time, don't rush it. And I'll see you on the next video.